Thank you. Okay, so with that said, I would like to introduce our keynote speaker. Our keynote speaker today, Katie, she has won a lot of hats. She is a engineer using a tons of languages, and she will probably tell you that she is on, she is a, a maintenance engineer. And uh, she would want to like to talk to us about, not about Python, but a language altogether that is called MOG. Now, Katie, she has本身有很多工作，那他今天要为我们介绍的是一个完全不同的语言。那我们知道今天是排康，但是他今天要我们介绍的是完全不属于人类语言，但是我们又每天在使用的emoji这个语言。那让我们来欢迎Katie。Hi
if you're the kind of person that likes to go into Unicode and Python documentation, which I am, this covers all the characters that you can represent with just four hexadecimal digits. So zero through nine, and then A, B, C, D, E, F. This plane contains a lot. It contains every single Latin character, every single non-Latin European character, Middle Eastern scripts, Asian scripts, all the Han unification characters, and a bunch more. And that's only one plane, and there are 17 in total. But I'm not going to talk about this plane. I'm going to talk about plane number one, which is the supplementary multilingual plane. This goes from 10000 to 1FFFF. And this is where you will find all the emoji that currently exists. This is where the dragons live. What I'm talking about is one specific dragon, dragon 1F409. This is the code point for the dragon emoji. I can't send you this dragon, sadly, because I'm on a Mac. That is how the dragon emoji looks if you have a completely up-to-date Windows machine. I can only send you that code point and your machine, be it a Android phone, a Apple phone, a Apple laptop, a Linux desktop, a Windows machine, a Samsung, a HTC, an LG phone, depending on what device you have, the dragon will look different, which is confusing because on Windows, the dragon looks like this. But if you have a HTC phone, the dragon looks like this. It looks like a Loch Ness monster who went to the speaker dinner last night and ate all of the duck and all of the fish hot pot and just went, Bwah. It's a completely different dragon, but it's the same code point. So unless I know what device you're using to read my message, I'm not going to know what kind of dragon you see. And it gets even stranger. If you have a Samsung phone, you get this. This is a Chinese dragon. The other ones looked like a European dragon. So even the type of dragon will change. Or if you have a, a HTC phone, it will look like a, a really cute dragon that sort of wants to be a deer with antlers, and it's holding a ball for some reason. Or if you're on Android, your dragon might look like this. But only if you have an older Android, because if you have an updated Android, it will look like this. But if you have an iPhone, a very old iPhone, the dragon looks like this. But if you have an up-to-date iPhone, it'll look like this. This dragon is very upset at you and is charging up a lightning bolt for some reason. But that doesn't matter, because if, you're, if I'm sending you a message on Twitter, depending on which device you're using, Twitter will automatically use their own emoji. So the dragon will look like this. But if I'm sending it to you on Facebook, if you're using the mobile app, it'll look like this. But if you're using the website, it'll look like this. So if I send you a dragon, there are 10 different options for what could be represented. And here's the thing. They all look like dragons. I mean, some of them may look like Chinese dragons. Some of them might look like European dragons. Some of them might look like Loch Ness. But they're all dragons. And if you're reading the message on Facebook mobile versus Facebook web versus Twitter versus your email, They'll all look different, but they all look like dragons. And I mean, sure, some of them are charging up lightning for some reason, and some of them are really bloated from having eaten so much duck, but they're all dragons. If I wanted to send you a picture of a dragon, 
then that's fine. But if I wanted to convey meaning based on the image of the dragon that I'm sending you, that's when you get into trouble. Because if I sent you a message that said, I'm feeling powerful, and then a picture of a dragon, if you're on Apple, that would make sense. I'm feeling powerful. I'm going to Hadouken. I'm bristling with energy. But if you're on HTC, I'm feeling powerful. Is it sarcasm? Is it me trying to be silly? Do I think that this dragon is very scary and powerful? Or am I thinking that I'm a bit green around the gills? And yeah, OK, I might be pushing this analogy a little bit with dragons, but this happens all the time in real life. For example, if I was to send a message on Twitter saying, I get to speak at PyCon Taiwan, eh, what am I trying to say here? I mean, this smile to me looks slightly anguished, but there's a different smile that I could have used to make my point across a bit better. This one. To me, they look the same. Because in Western culture, a bunch of emotional factors when looking at smiley faces are encoded within the mouth and not the eyes. It took me so long to realize that the one on the left isn't smiling, the one on the right is, because it's got smiling eyes. And there has been a paper published by the University of Minnesota where they worked out that people, depending on where they're from, read emojis differently. If you want to read this paper, which is a paper about emoji, which is cool, it's called Blissfully Happy or Ready to Fight, Varying Interpretations of Emoji. And they worked out that a bunch of people think that the one on the left is happy or the one on the left is angry. But the one on the right, everyone thought was happy. The problem is, the one on the left is grimace. It's upset, angry, frustrated. It's as opposed to And the sound effects help. Unfortunately, you can't have sound in emoji. What has been useful, though, is the one on the right is what most systems have updated their grinning emoji to. So it looks like the corners of the mouth are curled up, like it's smiling, which is useful for Western people to realize that it's smiling. But there is still emoji that can get confused between each other. For example, a message from a relative letting you know that the family cat has passed away. Happy crying face. I'm, I'm sorry, auntie, I think you have the wrong emoji. You might mean loudly crying face. They both have closed eyes. They both have eyebrows. They both have water coming from the eyes. They both have open mouths. When you're on an iPhone and you have this really tiny keyboard, how are you going to tell the difference? Unless you've seen them up and big and you know the difference. So it's very important to make sure that when you're sending messages to people that they don't misinterpret what you're saying if you only give them the emoji to go on. For example, these are all different emoji. I know the one on the far right as sleeping. I have no idea what the other three mean. This is supposed to be weary, tired, sleepy, and then sleeping. I didn't grow up with anime and manga. I do not know the differences here. I'm not sure whether the third one is sick because it's got some snot coming out of the nose, but that's supposed to be tired. And without that cultural reference, I can't tell what's going on. 
There's another issue wrapped up in this that I've mentioned a couple of times now. I'm from Australia. Australian culture is very much reliant on American and English culture. However, emoji come from Japan. So there's an entirely different set of cultural references that are encoded into emoji. Pictograms have been a part of many written languages for a long time. Some could say that Egyptian hieroglyphs are based on pictures. And much the same as uh, I've learnt that the evolution of different Chinese um, kanji characters are based on pictures that have evolved over time, a lot of the Japanese character sets are pictorial. So in the 90s, when phones didn't look like that, they looked like this, Japanese telecommunications companies were trying to encode characters in a way that they could send them between phones. And they realized there was some space left over. So what do we do with that space? They put in pictures. So the pictures that you could get on your very old Nokia phones where the screen, you couldn't touch it, you had to use keys and type in stuff. Or, or pages where, who here has had a pager, an actual pager? Yeah, pages are old. But back in the 90s, if you had a mobile phone in Japan, your emoji looked like this. This is Love Heart, uh, movie camera, cat, and sparkles. These symbols when that's the only thing that you've ever seen before, before emoji happened, before anything else, you can work out what these mean. I know what these mean because I've looked at them for long enough. But when you see symbols like this, you can start getting confused. Now, for the purposes of this, I'm going to update these 20 years, and this is what they look like now. Those ones. I know that Z is sleeping. I guess that the one on the right is explosion or collision or something. If I see something like this, I think, OK, it's not galaxy, it's not stars. If I look it up, it's dizzy. When a cartoon character hits their head, they sometimes see stars or birds going around because they're confused. OK, that's fine. But when I see this, I have zero reference. I have no idea what this means. If you send me this, I have nothing to go on. This is anger, because in manga, when a character is angry, all their veins on their forehead get really big and you can start seeing them through the skin because when your blood pressure goes up your veins get bigger and then you can see them and you can tell that someone's angry and so the cartoon version of that looks like this and yeah now I can understand that sure that could be anger especially when it's put on someone's head in bright red and they have the eyes and the mouth to match but I'm a dumb westerner I need to learn these things if I'm going to understand them. So when I see these, I have no idea. It's a lady who's maybe doing the YMCA. <laughs> a lot of people, especially in America, think the one on the left is sassy, but it's information person. The one in the middle is OK. The one on the right is no. And this is because in Japan, a circle is correct, whereas in Western culture, a tick is correct. So when you see like that, it means OK, and it looks like the circle. Getting back to the smiley faces, the difference between the eyes is really apparent as soon as you realize where these emoji come from.
This is technically a cow emoji. These predate emoji and use punctuation symbols to make faces. This is smiling eyes. I know this because of my days on IRC, but normally for a smiley face, I do this. So I have a colon and then a capital D. And so everything is sideways. So this is really clever because it means that I don't have to tilt my head. And when you put the cow emoji and the emoticon together with their emoji counterparts, it makes sense because the eyes are smiling. And so this is how I can finally understand what all these unusual symbols are supposed to mean. Because I didn't grow up with anime and manga. I grew up on Western cartoons. So now I understand what this means, and that's great, because then I can teach other people, which is why I'm here. Yay! Unfortunately, this sort of thing still isn't universal knowledge. New emoji keep on being added. There's a new set coming this week. We'll get to that. But last year's new emoji have already been added to your phones, to your laptops. And one of those emoji is called face with hand over mouth. The first three look like somebody's going The one on the end looks like <gasps> the eyes are different, so the meaning completely changes. If you were to send me this with a message saying, oh no, I wouldn't know whether you're being cheeky or whether you've just admitted to doing something very, very wrong. It's not just the faces where context matters, though. Emoji have a whole bunch of different hand and finger symbols. This is not all of them. Some of them in Western culture are considered so rude that I didn't put them on the slide. Guess which ones? Depending on your culture, some of these have different meanings to you. For instance, index and middle finger extended palm facing out is the official name of this emoji. Depending on your cultural background, you may interpret this as peace or victory, or it could mean two. But in some languages and cultures, this doesn't mean two, because in some places, they count on their fingers differently. If I was to send you this, which is thumbs up pointing upwards, this could mean Everything is OK. Thumbs up. Yay. Or, depending on the context, it could mean something completely different. If you're scuba diving, this means something is very, very wrong. I need to go up to the surface now. In Germany, this could mean one. If you've seen the Quentin Tarantino movie, Inglorious Bastards, he orders three drinks. But in Germany, you're supposed to order three drinks. And that's how they found out that he wasn't actually German. And then a great big fight scene starts with lots of guns and explosions. But if that scene was happening in Japan, this would mean five. In Australia, this can mean yay, thumbs up. It can also mean the symbol for, I want to hitch a lift, I want to get a cab, I want to flag down a taxi, I want to catch a bus. But in the wrong context, it can be, Whee! It can be extremely rude. It can mean, which is not something you should do to any Western person, especially if they're from Australia or Britain, because you will be very rude. But I got to do a raspberry on stage, so that's a good one. And my clicker is now broken, so that's going away. 
There are some things that will only make sense in the right context, such as the ambiguity of human gestures. But getting back to my original point, dragons. There have been efforts to fix how emoji are represented on different devices and different laptops so that they all generally look the same. And this is being dubbed the convergence of emoji. 2018 is the year of emoji convergence. It's the year where everyone is going to make their emoji look about the same. And you can really see this in action if you look through the history of Dancer. This is a specific emoji. It looks like a, a Spanish flamenco dancer with her red skirt and she's like that. But 10 years ago, this is what she looked like. This is what it looked like on the first iPhones. And when emoji first came out, they were only on iPhones because Apple wanted to sell iPhones in the Japanese market. And the Japanese said, well, are you going to add emoji? Because we really like emoji. All our phones in the 90s had emoji. We want emoji. So Apple added emoji. And it took a couple of years for any other vendor to catch up. The first time we see the dancer emoji is in 2012. And this is what it looks like. The one on the left is the original Android dancer emoji. It looks like Saturday Night Live, or uh, John Travolta, and Grease, and very Western movies that probably don't date very well, so you probably shouldn't see them. Um, the one on the right is the original Windows dancing emoji, which changed color the next year. So Android got their color, which is great. Um, except some of the Android emoji had some strange choices when they went to color. See my full talk for that story. But as the years go on, more emoji sets get introduced and their dancing starts getting strange. I do like the blobs on Android. I'm very upset that they don't exist anymore. But the fourth one along is Samsung. Samsung decided to change their dancer from this to this. OK? But as the years go on, emojis slowly start looking similar. So this is now on Android, Twitter, Apple, Samsung, Windows, and Emoji One. Emoji One is a open source emoji set that was kickstarted a couple of years ago. The Twitter emoji set is free to use on an open source license. Emoji 1 version 2 is free, and version 3 is freemium. So you can use um, low resolution images for free, but if you want the vector images, you have to pay a little bit of money. So all the dances look the same now which is good. This means that if I send you this emoji, doesn't matter what device you use, it'll look about the same. This particular emoji was so broken that they specifically added a male dancer emoji just to make sure that people worked out that it's, it's a flamingo dancer. It's a flamingo dancer. It's not Saturday Night Fever. It's but that's just the story of one particular code point. It could very well happen again, and it has, if you remember the hand covering mouth emoji. It'll also continue to happen unless vendors know and can agree on what to display emoji in in advance, or if they are OK to change. This happened last year when there was a dumpling emoji added. And this looks like a gyoza. This is the suggested image from the application to the Unicode Consortium for the dumpling emoji. It is a suggested image only. Vendors, so Apple, Google, Microsoft, Twitter, Facebook, can choose 
what they want to represent this code point as. So that's how we ended up with this. Some of them are gyoza. Some of them are sholong bao. Some of them are um, a Danish, maybe? Like an apricot Danish with like, with like pastry and orange inside. Which means that if you say, I want to go out for dumpling emoji, we could have completely different ideas about which restaurant you want to go to. Do you want to go to the Chinese place, the Japanese place? Do you want to just go to the bakery? And I mean, it's not the end of the world if we can't decide where we want to go to lunch. But it's a serious consideration. And I have a vested interest in this personally because, I mean, I love dumplings. Oh, I love dumplings. The food here has been so good. But this year, I have a very, very vested interest in how one particular emoji is going to be represented. This emoji. This is the parrot emoji. Who here knows of party parrot? The, the, yes, the, the, um, the emoticon on Slack that goes. That is based on a documentary with Stephen Fry, and that bird is known as a kakapo. It is a mountain bird from New Zealand. It's got a very big gray nose, and it's green, and it's very cute and endangered. But this is the image that Emojipedia created as a suggestion of what this parrot might look like. This isn't a kakapo. This is a blue macaw. What is the parrot going to look like on our phones, on our laptops later this year? Is it going to look like a macaw, a kakapo, a cockatoo, a parakeet, a toucan? What kind of parrot is it going to be? And I don't know. It'll be a surprise. I do know what one of them's going to look like, though, because emoji one are nice, and they showed me. That is what the parrot is going to look like on emoji one. It is going to look like a scarlet macaw. And it looks majestic. It looks like I'm pretty. I know who I am. I am a, I am a, self, I am, I am a self supporting parrot. I know that I'm the prettiest in all the jungle, but it's not a kakapo. It's not a party parrot. So what are the others going to do? I don't know. And that's really scary because I created this parrot because of party parrot. People aren't going to use it as party parrot if it doesn't look like a parrot partying. And when I say I don't know what's going to happen, I actually do know a lot of things about emoji. That's why I'm keynoting. Um, I know that Twitter should have their new emoji up and running by about the middle of June. So give them till the end of June. So this month, they should have the new emoji ready. I do know that some of the new emoji that you're going to get include the kangaroo emoji, which is cool, um, the lobster emoji, and there's a whole bunch of new phases, including redheads. So that's cool. But there's a lot I don't know. Emoji are going to continue to evolve, and I don't have a crystal ball to look into the future. There will be new emoji. That is going to be inevitable. Because the process to add new emoji is public, and anyone here can suggest a new emoji. For instance, one emoji we don't currently have is a dragon fly. Dragon fly. My full talk in much faster English is full of these kind of puns, if you like that sort of humor. To request a new emoji, you have to submit an application directly to the Unicode Consortium's emoji subcommittee. It's a very formal process. You have to submit it in PDF. So, to submit this, you have to detail what code point you want added, and then you have to list why. 
and they have a whole bunch of factors for both inclusion, why it should be added, and exclusion, why it shouldn't. So, for our dragonfly, some of the things that would help is the fact that it's distinctive. Well, yes, it is very distinctive. It's a dragonfly. There's n currently no fly. Would it be frequently used? Well, I don't know of any um, instant messaging service from back in the day like ICQ or Yahoo that use it, but I reckon people might, yeah? Um, but what could work against it? Well, it is a bit overly specific. Could it already be represented if I wanted to tell you about the cool people that study dragonflies? Could I just use dragon plane? Well, it would be good if I had a dragonfly emoji. You also cannot add any emoji if they're a logo or a brand. If you have an iPhone and you try to put in the watch emoji, it looks like an Apple watch instead of a tick, tick, tick watch. Apple. But I think that the dragonfly might be a good addition, except it is a little bit specific since there is a lot of different bugs already. There's a caterpillar bug, a bee, a spider, an ant, a ladybug, and also recently a butterfly. So could we get a dragonfly emoji next year? Could we add a fly next year? Could we add another dragon? More dragons would be cool. There's only one way to find out, and that's to email the Unicode Consortium. That URL, I'll have the slides up online later, that URL will show you the exact process you need to do in order to submit an emoji. But you don't have to do this on your own. Emoji Nation is a community designed to helping people think of ideas and put together proposals for new emoji. They're the ones that made the dumpling emoji happen, which is really cool. I like emoji. Emoji Nation is useful because you can see what has already been thought about being submitted and why it has or hasn't been submitted. So you can see on their website that bubble tea was thought about maybe being added, but it's currently being placed on hold. I've helped out a few through this service. I helped out a little bit on the knitting needles and yarn and thread submissions, but not all of their submissions get accepted. Coin and needle got rejected. There's no coin emoji. That's really strange, isn't it? If you are interested in getting whatever emoji you want, polar bears, bubble tea, um, dragonflies, what other emoji could we have? If you think of one, do check that out. And a lot of the information that I've presented today is based on the collection of information on Emojipedia, which is an emoji encyclopedia, which is exactly what I like to read because I'm a nerd. I have the glasses, I'm a nerd. It's run by an Australian called Jeremy Burge. Yay, Australians! And it has useful information about what every emoji looks like on every single device. So a lot of the images that I've used today are from their collection. They also have a blog, a podcast, and a newsletter if you're really interested in emoji and I've been in their newsletter, which is kind of cool. And that's really all I had to discuss today. However, I have a lot of time if people want to ask me anything about emoji, anything. So, the wonderful chairman here, you can ask a question in English, and if it's in Chinese, I have a translator, which will be useful. <laughs> But we have, what, 10 minutes, 15 minutes? Maybe 15. So do you want to maybe okay. explain what I just said? Yeah. So if there's a question you want to ask, we have about 15 minutes to ask. So you can ask a question on Telegram. Now, 
对，那如果说英文不好的话，没关系，你可以用中文问，然后会稍微翻译一下。Katie 会用英文回，然后如果你听不懂的话，我也可以就是再翻译回去这样。好。嗯、um, ，I I think the emojis extend problem. The extend problem maybe can using something like the open type feature, like ligature, to fix fix this problem. The Like the uh, rem, rem, rainbow flag is using the white flag and rem, rainbow. So what, what do you think about this kind of solution? Some of those are officially uh, suggested by the Unicode Consortium. They are detailed in the next version will be Unicode 11. So, uh, sorry, Unicode 11 is being officially like set in stone no more changes this is it on Wednesday on June 9 at the same sorry June 5 June 5 5 on the same day emoji 11 will be put in place and that denotes suggestions like the pirate flag which is skull and crossbones and then white flag I think that these ligatures are useful, but who here has a Windows machine, a Windows laptop? If you put together the cat face and a dragon in your Windows machine, it will turn up as a cat riding a dinosaur. Microsoft added ninja cats. So they have a ninja cat, they have a hacker cat, they have a cat riding a dinosaur, even though you have to use the dragon emoji because dinosaurs didn't exist. Dinosaurs do exist. There's a meat eater and a leaf eater now. But if you were to send me that and I don't have windows, that would ha make no sense to me whatsoever. So. But I think a mobile uh, company or the internet company have more powerful influence than the Windows, you know, because the website problem maybe can use in some web web form too. Yeah. So that. the pirate flag was yeah. from Twitter, and now that's been standardized. Standard, yeah. But use with caution. Yeah. <laughs> All right, yo, Saiga. Saiway. Do me the whole was in. Oh, oh, yo. Hello. Here. Hi. Uh, thanks for your talk. Very nice and interesting. Um, I have two very short questions. Um, the first question is about um, whether you have tried to submit a, an emoji, because I myself am very. Uh, fanatic about uh, emojis, um, but have you went through the process of submitting one? And I want to know, like, um, or do you know anyone that has done it before? Uh, the second question is about um, uh, what do you think about uh, like using emojis today and uh, problems like hate speech and stuff like that, and how emojis are used uh, to convey this kind of communicate this kind of thing um, I'm gonna ask you a question sure. just to clarify mm -hmm. did you come into my talk late uh, no no because no. I've already answered both of those okay. I made the parrot emoji and I had the coin emoji rejected and I had an entire bit in the middle about miscommunication okay. but if you want to talk later um, and if you need a translator, we can discuss more. Sure, thank you. Your mom, I have a question. All right. I Morning tea isn't ready yet. You're not leaving. <laughs> yeah, there's. I could give the second talk really fast. <laughs> no, I could wait, give wait, wait. Russell's really fast emoji talk. <laughs> no one will understand it, but I could give it. <laughs> I have it here. 
Maybe before that, can I ask a question? <laughs> Is he allowed to I ask a have. question? Yeah. yeah? Uh, okay. <laughs> so, are there easy way to easy ways to 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 input emojis on various devices? Because, like for example, if I have a key code for a, a particular emoji, do I need to like look through my look through my keyboard in my iPhone to input it, or is there a better way? There is so many ways. It depends on what device you have. So, on a Mac, I can press. Let me see here. No, my I can't show this thing anymore. That's fine. No, okay. Um, well, on my keyboard. Yay, keyboard. Okay. <coughs> One moment. Hello? Hey, look what I did. I pressed Control Command Space and then a picker came up. And so what I can do is I can start typing into here. Oh, it went away. Come back. Yay, okay. I can start typing C, A, K, E, and I get cake. I get a birthday cake, a short cake, and a fish cake. On Windows, if you press Windows key space, you get the same one. I don't think they have it on Linux yet. Um, for mobiles, some keyboards, if you start typing cake, it'll suggest, did you mean cake emoji? On Slack, you can type colon and then start typing out your emoji and it will come up with a list and you can click it. On HipChat, it's the same if you start with open bracket and then close bracket. But there's no universal one way to do it as opposed to just clearing out all the stuff. Uh -huh. And then just scrolling through all the emoji. There are lots of emoji. Where are the rude ones? No. Um, hi, there's all professions now. You can be an astronaut. The astronauts are um, ligatures as well. So it's man or woman, and then rocket ship is an astronaut. So that's cool. Um, oh, there's also all these Halloween ones. There's like vampires now, and zombies, and genies, and mermaids, and, and elves, and and witches and wizards and all the animals. So yeah, you can just scroll through all of them and go, I want a, what's that one? Fortune cookie. I want a fortune cookie. Fortune cookie, boop. And now I have a fortune cookie. One really cool trick, if I, wee turn my Wi-Fi back on. Wi-Fi. Come back. Do 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 do. Do 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 Spoon emoji. That is a real URL. If you enter in the spoon emoji.ws, it's a real website. You can use emoji for domain names. That's cool. Anyway. Uh. Is morning tea ready yet? I think there are some, but we should wait. We should still check if anyone has questions. <laughs> no, we're good. Three, two, one. Okay. I think Katie will still be here, right? At 
uh, maybe in the open space you have a slot registered or <laughs> I could have an emoji slot registered at the open spaces yeah but it, I'll, I'll have a square on the board which is just a smiley face <laughs> and then like a megaphone yeah open space is my whole one we're doing shall do in the bin so it does do your call okay oh wait there's an there's a question there yeah. where wave there hello Hi. um can I have uh, will, will will there be a possibility to have emoji within the Twitter handle? <laughs> that would be great. Actually. Having That's emoji inside your Twitter handle. Yeah. <laughs> Twitter doesn't even allow ligatures, so I can't have a U with two dots in my name. And for people where their name has an E with an accent, they currently can't even have their name as their username. So let's do that first, and then we can add emoji. And when people start having legal names that include emoji, then we can update every single system ever. Um, there are some government systems that don't even allow accents they just instead of the e with an accent they'll just remove the accent which isn't your name and it's annoying names are completely valid to have accents and and Cyrillic characters and hyphens and spaces so let's fix that first and then we can add it so I can legally change my middle name to sparkles <laughs> And I have another question. Uh, is that uh, I'm not sure what I haven't looked into those um, emoji standards currently. I'm not sure what the standard says. Is um, I guess it will be um, text uh, descriptions uh, of what the emoji means. But um, are there still uh, some possibilities where um, even with those text uh, descriptions, there are still like cultural um, you know, mis miscommunication or something, so that um, people from different cultures can interpret the text uh, differently and then produce like completely different emojis. Will there be a possibility with that? I'm just curious. <laughs> okay, so Samsung emoji. Before they updated it, the cookie emoji everywhere else looked like a delicious chocolate chip cookie. On Samsung, it looked like a salt cracker. Because in South Korea, cookie, for them, means those biscuits. But they've since looked at all the other emoji from different suppliers and vendors and converged. The data for what the text is for emoji is many, many, many megabytes, but it is official. So uh, on my laptop where it had the hand up, that's a person with raised hand so you could interpret that as a person with a raised hand and culturally that could be i have a question or me me pick me pick me as far as i know apart from what samsung did most vendors base what they have their emoji on based on what unicode provides as the text and take suggestions from the image. But I don't know of anyone who has different emoji based on different cultures, which would be really complicated on a technical level to have to send an emoji with like, um, if you sent a hot beverage emoji, there is no coffee emoji. There is a hot beverage, and then there is tea. 
If you have a hot beverage emoji and maybe with the ligatures you send it with an American flag, it will be Starbucks. If you send it with a Taiwanese flag, it'll be green tea. If you sent it with a Italian flag, it would be espresso. If you sent it with a Canadian flag, it would be terrible coffee. <laughs> if you sent it with an Australian flag, it would be a flat white, that sort of thing. You could do that, but it would get increasingly complicated. As opposed to, say, using words, when you say, do you want to go get Starbucks drink emoji, as opposed to, do you want to go get insert value of interpreted emoji here? So maybe one last quick one question. Yeah. One more. It needs to be quick. Yeah, quick. Please. Quick. Quick. Quick, go. go. Do you think it is a good idea that we have every company that have a standard emoji? <coughs> Which I mean, if you use, even if you use many devices, they all look the same. Do you think that would be a good idea? Yes, it would. The problem is that we're moving away from that. Um, who here uses Twitter and Slack and the internet on their phone? Who here also uses Android? Yes. You will have three different versions of emoji on your phone right now. On Slack, it will default to Apple emoji. On Twitter, it will default to Twitter emoji. And on the internet, it'll default to your system Android emoji. That's really annoying. I want one version, but my phone is so old that I can't get updates for it. So the parrot emoji will be a box. So if it wasn't for those hacks, I couldn't see emoji at all. So I would rather be able to see an emoji than to not. But which emoji I see, I might be a little bit opinionated, just a little bit. Does that answer your question? Am I done? Yes! Need to right now. Yeah, we're running out of time, so thank, thanks, Katie. So